Welcome back. This is continuing on the topic of culture and economy of Singapore. So you heard about the different people, the different ethnic groups, religions and languages of Singapore. And let's talk about how we are, who we are today from we were who we were before. Now, Singapore was part of the Malayas. Yeah, it's not a very familiar term now, but Malaysia used to be known as the Malayas. It is not just one peninsula, but it also has East Malaysia. But after trying to break away from the British rule, Singapore on its own was trying to survive and thought with the help of the big brother, the Malayas, we would do better. Unfortunately, based on different grounds and beliefs, we were rejected. The former Prime Minister, Mr. Lee Kuan Yew, actually made a very tearful um, speech and a, a declar dec declaration of independence kind of speech on the radio and it was caught on video and it's now played in the Museum of Singapore. If you want to go Google it, you might find it. A tearful departure from Malaysia while at the same time declaring independence of the nation, the, the Republic of Singapore. Why I stress over this for about a minute, it's because that is very important to the mindset and the culture of how the Singaporean workforce is. We were ruled, we were rejected, we were occupied by the Japanese, and there is no way we should fail once we gain our independence. And that's the, that's the mindset of the Singaporean people during the developing phase of the country and within three decades growing up in Singapore I saw so much difference between 70s and 80s and by the 90s we were at the top of the world almost having this the best in almost everything let's take a look at that that's the first part seaport the busiest seaport in the world that's during the mid to late 70s um, I can't say that now. Shanghai has taken over the first place. We are at second place now. I remember when I was in grade school, that was the first thing that the teacher would tell us during social studies, you know, lesson. And I, the class and I, we were also surprised and proud at the same time. We, we didn't think we would occupy such an, such an important role or such a good spot, being such a small country. And that kind of educated us and taught us to think and know outside our little world. And being small and compact sometimes may be an advantage. And after the seaport, of course, we are not just satisfied with that. We then developed the best airport in the world, not just in Asia. And we, Singapore Airlines was the best airlines for many, many decades. I heard that um, Qatar Airways and maybe Emirates have taken over it now, but I have flown with many airlines, including uh, Emirates, and I have um, someone who has traveled with Qatar Airways before. We think that's focus. There's no way Singapore Airlines could be worse than those. Or I should say in a more positive way, that there's no way there is any other airlines that could beat Singapore Airlines in its service and standard. Now, this is a very brief chart on what Singapore is doing or has done. This is the data from year 2013. You can see very healthy unemployment rate. Inflation rate is about there. And there is actually no information for population below poverty line. Don't get me wrong, there are poor people in Singapore, but there is not a clear definition of poverty. Um, so much so that there are homeless people, um, or, or there is a, a problem of homelessness. There are homeless people, there are people who panhandle, but <laughs> believe you me, some make it out, uh, some make paneling a career per se. Trust the Singaporean to be able to make anything into a career, okay? And how do we ensure success or becoming better than we were before if we do not have other resources? 
As you saw from the, one of the first few slides, we are a little dot on the map, small island with no natural resources, no oil, no agriculture, no fishing. What do we have? People. So people are our only resource and that's what the, the leaders of the country, especially during the leadership of uh, Mr. Lee Kuan Yew, saw. You invest in your people, the people would work for you and bring the country to the next level. And then how do you invest in people? You educate them. In Singapore, every single child goes to school. It is a crime to not send your child to school. You could be sent to prison if you do not send your child to school. Um, homeschooling is a very new concept in Singapore. I'm not sure if it's legal yet, but almost every child goes to school and goes to school as early as 18 months. And that's called nursery school. And it's not a, a, an, an oddity. Every woman almost in Singapore works. And by working naturally, the child has to be somewhere. Either the, the grandma, the grandparents take care of them. And even with the grandparents taking care of them, they still send the children to school because they are afraid of being left behind academically. In Singapore, there is this thing called kiasuism. Kiasu means afraid to lose. You, you don't want to be behind anybody. Be it queuing for McDonald's, standing in line for a bus, whatever it is. As long as there is a line, you want to get ahead of the line. And therefore, there are um, early school ages and then kindergarten from five to seven, two years before you go into first grade in primary school. That's the elementary school here. Six years of that. And then if you do well in your leaving school exam uh, during primary six level, which is the sixth grade, you get into an express stream and finish that, which is like a high school kind of thing in four years, or else you get into the normal stream and finish the work that you have to do in four years in five years. One of the very good planning or thinking behind this is that unemployment rate does not have to go up or get inflated when there is not a whole batch of people coming out at the same time. You keep them at pace to come out to the society at work, to work. Then, this was during my time, I'm talking about 15, 20 years ago, when it worked so well. But these days, people don't come out or go get work after secondary school education anymore. It is just not enough. So we have higher school education, and that's college, which is um, before you get to university. You get two years junior college again. If you did well in your secondary school's leaving exam, you go to a two years junior college or you finish your, your work in three years in a pre-university setting. And then thereafter, you can go to university. There is also an option now to go straight to polytechnic, straight from secondary school. And some of the schools even adopt a system now as in you don't need to take your leaving school exam anymore. It's if you come to this school, you are guaranteed to go to this junior college, so you will stay with us for the next six years. I believe the mentality behind this is to keep the student pool strong and also to ensure that the college has enough students to fill up the seats as the students continue with their higher education and not leave the school system. Um, it's a fairly new system, it's about three years old. Um, the success rate is yet to tell, but so far, so good. With the educated people and therefore better and com more competitive workforce, can Singapore then stay strong in competing with the world? How does Singapore compete with the world? It competes by being friendly. It is really friendly with the neighboring countries like Malaysia, Indonesia, Thailand, and um, the Philippines. These are the four, including Singapore, the five top original ASEAN country. ASEAN countries is a organization of the countries in the Southeast Asia region. Now, Cambodia is in it, Vietnam is in it, many other countries are in there. I think there are about 11 countries there now, and it is a leader in that organization. It has very strong ties with China, so strong that people mock that Singapore is a little communist Chinese community, uh, 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 society because of the way the 
system is run, you know, the government says yes, you don't say no kind of thing. It also has very strong ties with the U.S., um, very good relationship. Not only that, it also has very um, neutral relationship with the Middle East, Africa, and Eastern Europe. And of course, with the original boss, UK, and the rest of the world. That when you have a good relationship with the other countries, it means what? There's no censors, you have free trade, everybody is happy to come to Singapore to do business, everybody is happy to have Singapore as a business partner in the country. And I think the reason, I feel the reason why the other countries are happy to do business with Singapore, not only because it's the hub of this business center, but also um, physically, size-wise, we are so small. So being small is a good advantage here. We are so small that we can't, we, we can't really be a threat, a threat to any big countries. So what is in the future for Singapore? Um, as a psychologist, I should talk about the positive things first, although I did list population as one of the biggest challenges here. Um, that's because I am a Singaporean at heart. I live here now. I, I, I reside here. I, I work here. I have my children here. I'm married here. But I, but I communicate with my friends and family over at Singapore very consistently, very constantly. And I hear their woes and their day-to-day -day lives very um, um, frequently. The infrastructure is strong, but the problem of overpopulation, it's not in the future. I think it's happening now. It used to be about 3 million when I left them about 10 years ago. It's close to 4 million now, and the government was hoping to hit 6 million with the uh, foreign talents and the immigrants. The overpopulation is so bad now that transportation is a problem. Inflation goes up, um, jobs for the locals are scarce. Not that they, they have high uh, unemployment right now, but you don't get the best jobs per se. So there is a lot more competition from people from other countries. However, having said that, Singapore is and still will be the medical hub of Southeast Asia, that region, because of the people that it attracts to go there to practice medicine and also because of the, um, the first class quality of healthcare and deliverance and plus the um, research and development, it's very advanced in that area for Singapore. Of, but nevertheless, it's also the business center and it's also the representative of Asia. When you think of Singapore, you think about it as a oriental city However, with the Western features and advantages of doing business with. First and foremost, they speak English. So if anyone wants to do business with China or Hong Kong or any part of that region, the best bet is to go through Singapore. And that's why I say it's a representative of Asia and at the same time the business center of Asia. If you succeed in Singapore, that will kind of help you to move on to China, to the Philippines, to Thailand. But if you are brave enough to go into China or the other countries that I've mentioned before going to Singapore, the risk factor is bigger. You are taking more risks by doing that because you have not acclimated yet yourself yet in the region. And Singapore is the best place to acclimate a foreigner of the region. I was going to conclude my presentation with that last slide. Then I realized I cannot forget. I can't believe I forgot for a while that I did not mention food. Singapore is also a place that many travel to for food. Even the Singaporeans, believe you me, some people would rather not migrate because of the food in Singapore. An example here, I hunt for Singaporean food wherever I can in this state and in this country. It is something that is close to heart. It is something that will always call the Singaporeans home from far apart. And of course, if you are out of Singapore, you can always make a business out of providing Singaporean food to the Singaporean foodies. Thank you for watching my presentation. I hope you have discovered something through the presentation and that you have found Singapore a very interesting country
to do more research on. Good day.